Welcome back to New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Virtual flag terror is here. We have three developing stories on this 280th episode of New World Next Week, and they're all basically about rage clicking in the year of divide and conquer. Story the first, via activist post, in what will likely be an historic leak, not only George Soros, but his Open Society Foundations and a number of groups supported by Soros were hacked to the tune of 2,576 files which have already been released by DC leaks. The files come from institutes and Soros-operated funded organizations all across the world, USA, Europe, Asia, Latin America, Africa, the President's Office, and the World Bank. The documents span from 2008 to 2016. George Soros is, of course, most well-known for playing a major role in the funding and facilitating of the bulldozer revolution in Serbia that overthrew Milosevic in 2000, George's Rose Revolution of 2003, the 2006 push to move Turkey towards a more Islamist governing structure, and even the Occupy movement in the United States, among a great many others, none of which brought anything other than greater misery, impoverishment, and police state mechanisms to bear on the general public. The Occupy movement, maybe being the only exception, still brought nothing to its participants except the opportunity to burn off excess anger and energy, along with a few cracked protester skulls. It was otherwise an incredible waste of time. Soros has also been instrumental in funding and radicalizing the Black Lives Matter movement that has produced riots, racial attacks, and general racial tension across the country. We can include some of the other articles from this leaked Soros memo. Refugee crisis is the new normal and gives new opportunities for global influence. James, as I noted, these are kind of developing stories. What's, what do we make of all of this? Because as we've noted now for many, many years, and I think as, as Webster Tarpley coined the phrase, it's virtual flag terrorism. There's no real way to exactly know who's doing what to who. That's true. Um, I think we can get caught up more on the who's doing it rather than what is being revealed. And that's the entire strategy with the DNC leak um, is to go, oh, it's Russian hackers. So don't don't look at any of the actual material here. Don't look at the things that we're actually doing behind the scenes because it's Russians. And that's uh, that's the, the strategy they're trying. That's not the important part of this story. In fact, even for people especially for people who uh, know, for example, from episode 113 of The Corbett Report, meet George Soros, know about Soros and all the shady stuff that he's involved in. It's tempting to take this and just dismiss it as, uh, you know, nothing. We already knew all of this kind of, you know, dismissal. It's, I think it's more important than that. The point here is that it is 100% open and established that people like Soros and groups like the Open Society Foundation are pulling strings and are pushing levers and trying to get you to react with rage, trying to pit you against your neighbor, trying to make you hate you know, that person down the street, rather than looking at people like the Soroses of the world. The question is, how are you going to respond to that? Are you going to play into that? Are you going to say, are you going to get into the rage cycle of the damn refugees and oh, Black Lives Matter protesters and those are the enemies? No, the enemies are the ones who are making this happen at the top. That is what we have to keep in mind. And the only way to win their rigged game is not to play it. Do not give in to the, the, to the dissension and the strife because they want you rioting on the streets. They want the rage. They, they, they grow in power with the rage. So don't give in to it. Do not give them that. Instead, focus your energy against the, the Soros's uh, and, and his ilk. Those are the real enemies. And I think a lot, a lot of this rage, and again, it doesn't kind of turn on overnight. It's a slow kind of building thing. A lot of it has been built by, I think, the, the cognitive dissonance, that hurt in your stomach from trying to make sense of looking around at a world that does not really make sense anymore. The stories don't make sense, even from a logical, like, beginning, middle, and end kind of story structure kind of way. And I think that's led to a lot of what we're seeing. So there's a comment and again everything we say and play will be included in the show notes down below so please follow that and and do more research and and comment and share and that's how again we kind of learn our way forward like our buddy Richard Grove says but i think where a lot of this comes from is none of it makes sense and everything does seem so crazy there's a comment on the activist post story about hack proofs dissident groups and movements funded by forest that kind of notes we're in the twilight zone we're in a strange spot where Soros 
funds the legalization of marijuana, which is ultimately a massive peaceful movement, and then he funds violent movements as well. It's all these things that don't seem to make sense, which gets at the fundamental part, I think, James, of they fund both sides. That's a pithy, small way to put it, but that's really what's going on. They fund both sides to kind of foment their order out of that chaos. So things are really kind of crazy here in the States right now. Cities quite literally on fire, and America's next top president can't stand up for falling down. So we'll include the link to your older episode as well, James. Meet George Soros as we move to our second story this week on the hacks that never end. And we take a story from Business Insider. Shadow brokers claim NSA hack and share some high-tech hacking tools. Cybersecurity experts are searching for answers after an unidentified group claimed on Monday to have hacked into Equation Group an elite cyber attack group associated with the NSA. The shadow brokers claimed in a post on Tumblr to have hacked Equation Group and say they're holding an auction to sell off the cyber weapons they were able to steal. Shadow brokers have provided samples of files free to access to prove their legitimacy. Now, Business Insider actually goes on to say, we didn't actually post any of this because it might put them in a damaging situation. So this is another ongoing, developing story where I don't really know who to trust in a lot of these situations. James, do you? Uh, There is no one to trust with a story (laughs) like this because there are so many potential layers to this. I'll throw in a link to uh, my appearance on Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock yesterday where I was talking about this story and the various layers involved. But I think it's important to note that it's not that these hackers, whoever they may be, hacked into the NSA per se. It seems that they hacked into a malware staging server for the NSA. Of course, the NSA doesn't mount their malware attacks on others from their own servers. They have servers around the world that they use for those purposes. It looks like someone was uh, hacking into this. Snowden, for whatever that's worth, is on Twitter saying that this is probably Russia, and it's probably them sending a warning to the U.S. to say, we know whatever you were doing on this particular malware staging server, we know it because we were monitoring it. Um, and he's, he thinks that that's uh, kind of a chess game about the DNC leaks and, you, you know, don't blame us because we have goods on you kind of thing. Again, take all of this for whatever it's worth. I mean, it's just layer upon layer upon layer of the onion. And who knows who this real, this shadow banking or shadow broker group is or what their real agenda is or whether it's the NSA itself doing it to itself. I mean, I don't know. There's so many different possibilities here. But one of uh, one of the good takes that I saw on this was from Dan Dix. Press for Truth had a good video about this. I'll throw that in the links as well. So don't trust any anything that's coming out about this. As you say, this is virtual flag terrorism. So uh, we don't have access to the server logs. We can't even begin to you know, to, to take a look at what what's really going on under the hood here. So all we're getting is just the pieces that are being reported to us from on high. Take them for what they're worth. You you mentioned Hancock, and I actually, as you were talking, I, I think of I think of Hitchcock as we're looking at a lot of these things. So you're sort of saying the who and and how they did it and all those things are possibly the red herring. Of all of it, and that ultimately the story is really about what is contained in the files, and the legitimacy of legitimacy of those has never really been put into question. We don't question any of the things that now we know. Soros funds all these organizations. Now we know all the stuff about Hillary, all the other groups. I believe the word you're looking for is MacGuffin. MacGuffin. I already just timed it out. It's a MacGuffin. So, like uh, the Spike Lee film Inside Man from several years ago, the MacGuffin in a way in that movie is. It's all about this bank robbery, and it's a big, cool bank robbery movie. But when it ultimately turns out, the whole movie is about, I think, Nazi credentials hidden away in banks. And that's the, that the information is the real thing, and that the jewels in the bank robbery are just the show to kind of keep everybody, including the police, including the people, and everybody distracted. Now, James, you knew that word, MacGuffin. Have you done shows or talks about that? I haven't, but I am a Hitchcock fan. All right. Well, let's let's note that for maybe a film literature and New World Order episode as we move to our third and final story on this New World next week for August 18th, 2016. Russian hacker Guccifer. Is it is it Guccifer? Do people say Guccifer? I'm sorry. I say Guccifer, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. 
it's got two C's. The Italian in me says it's it's hey, it's Guccifer. So I don't know. People will comment about how to correctly pronounce it. I, I do tend to mangle names sometimes. Russian hacker Guccifer 2.0 publishes complete personal information of 200 congressional Democrats, and he gets his Twitter account suspended for a little bit. The Twitter account of Guccifer 2.0, the hacker who claimed responsibility for leaking a trove of Democratic National Committee documents, was suspended less than 24 hours after dumping fresh DNC data. Last Friday, the hacker wrote a blog post taking credit for a fresh leak from the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. That's the DCCC link, so you need, you need kind of a spreadsheet to follow along. He published an Excel spreadsheet containing the mobile phone numbers and email addresses of every Democrat in the House of Representatives, every Democrat in the House of Representatives, as well as passwords to DCCC files to substantiate his claim. The hacker who had actively been using Twitter to publicize his leaks has since had his account suspended, but it's been reinstated. You can go to it right now and see that he's retweeting and doing all the normal Twitter things. Enter another character onto this drama, WikiLeaks claimed that the suspension was related to the publication of the DCCC documents. And again, we don't really know who to believe anymore, whether or not this is Guccifer or Guccifer, or whether he's Russian or, or what, James? Look, here's the thing about this. He's running a WordPress.com site. He's uh, on Twitter. You know, I mean, it's not like the NSA can't bring to bear their multi-gajillion dollar, you know, tech, uh, spying tech to, to find out who this guy is and where he is and, you know, nab him uh, if they really wanted to. That's the thing about this. Who Who is allowed to leak and what are they allowed to leak and why are they allowed to leak it? Because it has to be seen in that context, especially when the NSA is the Internet and the Internet is the NSA. They know where this guy is and they can shut him down at any time. And clearly, like Twitter, they shut him down for a little while, but uh, okay, you, you can keep going, keep going, keep keep leaking. I mean, either, I, I, it doesn't even necessarily mean that whoever this Guccifer is, maybe it could be a real person who really believes that they're really leaking, but if you're being allowed to leak this stuff, that's that puts it in a different game, because clearly there's someone upstairs who's... who's uh, not unhappy with what you're doing. And we have to think about why that is. And what, again, what is the end purpose of all of this? And does it just serve to, uh, to fan the flames of the summer of rage? I, it definitely does that. And that's, a th I think, a thing to remember sort of too. In the, in the gaming world, in all those certain areas, we hear those stories about swatting, about sending SWAT teams to someone's house on, on false pretenses. The people who do that are busted immediately. Anytime people try and do any sort of tech crime... You see nothing but those stories in all your local news, but somehow, some way, the most wanted people in the world, terrorists and hackers, are able to just willy-nilly do what they want on tools that we know, again, they created and they put back doors in. So uh, that's the thing to think about, again, before we go freak out and yell and scream about who's on what side. I kind of think a good one to always go back to is the capitalist conspiracy, the old G. Edward Griffin film strip that kind of gets into the strategy of tension. And it is Wall Street essentially funding both sides, whether those are the Bolsheviks or, or the Allies or Black Lives Matter or alt-right whatevers. James, there is, there is a little bit of good news, I suppose. The latest episode of Good News Next Week, I had taken a couple of weeks off because we had been out of town. And honestly, not a hell of a lot of good news to go over. So this latest episode of Good News Next Week is kind of a double-sized and has probably twice the amount of stories we would typically cover. It's called Little Free Pantries on Your Sidewalk Give Shelf-Stable Help. It's sort of about the growing movement of little free libraries or community fridges in places. Also, Ireland jails banksters and Canada frees patsies on that Good News Next Week episode. James, the only other thing I will mention is not even a hashtag New World Next Week story, although you can pretty much be up to date on everything going on in the world using that hashtag. One last article, I think, that kind of points out, again, the Twilight Zone crazy world that we're in. The musical question is asked, who got us into these endless wars? And the answer from Pat Buchanan is the Council on Foreign Relations. We'll include that article, and again, everything that we say will be included in the show notes for these episodes, James. You can say a lot about the times we're living through, but you can't say they're boring. Um, well, anyway, yeah. we're here we are documenting them. Thank you again for the stories. Talk to you again next week. All right, man. Thanks.